Hello and welcome to Tim Talk, the the podcast dedicated to the Creature Collection MMO, Tim Tim. I am Presby Kennedy, joined always by my wonderful uh, co-host, Mr. Boo. How you doing? I am doing good. Doing, doing fantastic. I got, uh, got myself ooh, ooh. a little more crystals. So All right. I can't yeah. complain. I, I I went I went zero for hold two on, on, on my we'll first get, we'll radars. Get to that. My we'll get first to that, radar. Because we're gonna do the whole episode on the patch today and uh, news. But uh, let's welcome our special guest joining us as a co-host this week. We have Rarzi. Rarzi, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. How is everybody in the chat doing? <laughs> I'm so jealous of your crystal. My koish cannot compete. I can't talk about it. I'm punished. Uh, we can talk later. It's okay. Rarzi, I'll give you the same offer I give all of the hosts. I can introduce you, and uh, if you'd like, I can introduce you, and then if I miss anything, you can um, cover it, or you can introduce yourself. Which one do you want? I would like for Rarzi I... to introduce himself. Because all right, Rarzi, Rarzi go ahead and let, let people... I would have liked to hear what Kennedy is to say, but uh, my name is Rarzi, that real name. I used to stream Temtem, will eventually once again i run a club called asylum with arkham we're cool i voice act and i work in a counseling office and that's Iluma. hey that's uh yes and we are hyped to have rosy here uh with us um rosy also one of the staff members of uh temporium runs all of our auctions and stuff for us so uh fantastic having them finally on tim talk all right uh, so let's, uh, can we turn up Rorzy's mic? Yes, I can. Um, audio. <laughs> Rorzy, mm -hmm. king of the Luwalis. Blank, I found someone with a hypoxia ETC, so we're going to try to get that, and then I'll be the true king of Luwalis. All right, I turned you up to 70%. All right, uh, so... Oh, it has been a week. It has been a week and a half, gentlemen. We have, out of the blue, uh, got a economy patch. Uh, there's been so much happening in Tim Tim this past week. My voice cracked there because it's just... I'm excited. I'm, I'm bursting with excitement. But you know how we do this thing. We start off the show, every show. We talk about Side Park and we talk about the re weekly reset. So... What is Cy Park? I'm Cy pretty Park sure dead? it's dead. Cy Park dead? Well, I mean, we can still talk yeah. about Dead Park. I mean, let it die. Let it die. Kill the scam park. Let, let it die. die. Let Don't it die. Don't care about it anymore. <laughs> let it die. Yeah. Uh, so I've got it pulled up on the screen for everybody. Um, Cy Park this week is 2,500 pan suns for entry. You get 36 cards. Uh, the Tims that are there is a little cute Osuchi and Bun Bun, both spawning at 80% rate. And uh, it's 1x Luma rate and minimum SVs of 28. Uh, I believe that's a little bit on the higher side of what they normally do these minimum SVs at. And a 10% chance at an egg move. Um, I think both Bun Bun and Osuchi have three egg moves. I know it's Crystal Bite, Dust Vortex, and something else for Bun Bun. And then like... Um, Osuchi's got uh, quite a few too, but I don't, I can't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, I got like Gaijin said, Cy Park's dead. <laughs> what do you guys have to say or think on Cy Park? I don't think it's dead. I think there's still potential. Uh, you know, SV weeks people will still say is a lull, but I, I wholeheartedly believe an SV week is the best time to Luma hunt. That's when I got three Swallies with unbelievable stats, and that's where most of the hackable, perfect Lumas come from, realistically. Yeah, I, so I, I think Park will I always have life. I appreciate minimum SVs on a Tim until I got a Luma, and it's just like it's all green, it's all green. <laughs> uh, oh, go ahead, Gaijin. Yeah, I uh, the, the minimum SVs. I still like the minimum SV weeks in Side Park. Like, I don't know. I I got burnt out pretty hard on on Luma hunting. Like like at least I don't know. Like knowing that your odds are this exact same when you go to park feels a lot better to me. 
than going and thinking, you know, oh, it, it's it, it's times four or times two times whatever, and and then it's it's you you still get nothing, and then other people are like, oh hey, I got uh, six. yeah, not only did I get six, <laughs> I got six Luma two eyes, and it's just like, but how, but how, Rosie, Rosie goes into park like thirty minutes and always <laughs> finds a Luma like every single park. Valash took me twenty minutes. Two I took two hours. I got four scales and two laponites in five I'm, hours. I'm You're imagining disgusting. the Norman Osborn <laughs> uh, meme from the uh, first sci- or Spider-Man movie. Of, I'm something of a Luma hunter myself. <laughs> uh, that... You know, I've I've proven my worth though. The 26k Zephy encounters, the y- yeah, 40k it, Gialis hey, encounters. Hey, I, I would like to say. Um, as long as you know I'm in charge of the show, I'm never going to dog on the amount of work anybody puts into Luma hunting because I, I that that never feels good. Like you didn't do enough and get. It's like nah, you, you got your Luma, you got your Luma. Just don't don't rub it in other people's faces. That's how we all coexist. But uh, I tell you, when uh, Kennedy's One Luma Equality World ha- comes out, a lot more people are gonna be. <laughs> All right, and moving on to the next topic. I want to hear about this. <laughs> no, you don't, because it's one. It's 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 it, it, it's one Luma. You get one Luma. You just choose which which Temtem you want to be in that spot. Here, let me slide my Temtem into the Luma slot. <gasps> uh, yeah, uh, but uh, all jokes aside, let's move on to the free Tem this week because we're gonna stuff to talk about and this free tim week is like laud is it juicy uh for 50 releases you get 20 tiny crystals nice little bit of pan suns for 125 releases you get one incubator ticket which is a ticket that lets you use a machine in the breeding center that insta hatches a egg um for 250 releases you get four wish you well coins which is a new, uh, which is a new loot mechanic. Uh, Crema introduced uh, this past pa- or this patch that came out this week, which we'll discuss more. Which wish you well coins have some really cool um, rewards tied to them. But all in all, they're worth about ten to fifteen k on the um, on the official Discord. So I think that's probably one of the biggest rewards we've had in that slot. Four of these is about sixty k of um, of potential pan suns. Uh, being for the 250 slot and then we have a telomere hack which uh one telomere hack for stamina at 400 uh tim or free tim releases all in all i really really like this free tim week i've been free timing on koish like all <laughs> all monday yeah i'm really happy with the the four wish you well coins for 250 that's really cool and the stamina hack is one that i've been looking for i, I need three snacks so this one is a nice little in between so next time we get two yeah I'll and uh, don't forget you can also get them from the weekly too which is really really nice and we'll talk about the weekly quest uh gaijin you want to say anything on the um free tim <laughs> i like the wish you well but i mean uh, i i haven't free timed in a bit i've been being lazy i'm just i'm just trying uh, to find my 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 fish but we'll oh, talk about do you that want to later. talk about it now gaijin do you want to talk about it now okay no no uh, not there yet. gaijin your not there sugar yet. daddy is returning to tim tim by the way uh dumaga um gave me a couple tims at the start of this week to level up for them and uh yeah it makes me think dumaga is going to be back playing this game um semi consistently again uh which is always nice to be friends with Dumaga, nobody's ever hurting for Pan Sons when you're rolling. <laughs> when you're rolling with Dumaga, all right. Uh, the final thing, um, the final thing for the weekly reset before we go on to the news, there is a fishing mechanic which Gaijin was talking about in game where you have to find a um, certain fish, and um, in order to do that, the certain types of fish spawn in um, a set location. The fish that is spawning this week is the melee fish. And uh, when we get to the patch notes, we'll um, explain what that means. But uh, the biggest news, like crazy big news, um, at the start of this week that we got is Tim Tim is going to be coming to 
uh, is going to be coming to early access on a console. Uh, it's going to be coming to the PS5. Um, I didn't read all of this article, so I don't I don't wholly have all of the news um, on this. I don't know if either one of you want to say like something on it. Otherwise, I can talk and uh, summarize it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically just coming into early access until full release. Once full release is, is you know, out, it'll be on all of the promised consoles. But early access is only available on PlayStation because PlayStation's doing more of their exclusive timed release stuff. But that's, that, that's really all there is to that, I think. I um, mean, it's only available on the PS5, not the PS4. It's not backwards compatible or anything like that. So... If you have a PS5 pre-ordered, you can play it on that. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, I I really like the I really like the additional I guess uh, trailer that they released for the game. I'm not gonna play it right now. My stream's gonna go through audio, or rather, the audio is gonna go through stream and everything. But uh, they put together like a little um, trailer showing off some of the features in game and everything that you can do. And it made me just so excited again to, like... Well, I mean, I was already excited to play Tim Tim. But it just makes me want to go out into the archipelago and just go collect and grab and uh, fight and battle. Uh, but yeah, so if you are interested in this and you're affected by this and you have a PS5, um, the early access will be um, on the PS5 on December 8th, uh, this coming month. Uh December 8th, 2020. Um, for This coming year, not month, because that's <laughs> that's not this month. This oh, month is November, yeah, for those of you who aren't sure. <laughs> I think we have to be responsible as well, do our due diligence. I don't know if I saw this on Twitter or somewhere in the Discord. They said that they are working on cross saves, but that's not confirmed right now for the release. Uh, although... If they're working on it, it's likely going to come in the future. So if you do get it on PS5 on release of that early access, you may not be able to play with your main account. You may have to start a new one at that time. You may you may not at all. Because um, yeah. I know right now with, with Genshin Impact, I know it's not the same thing, but Genshin Impact has cross-play on PS4, but it does not have cross-save. You cannot use your PC or mobile Genshin account to play on playstation you have to make a new account so play playstation could do that as well um so who knows but you know just keep that in mind if you are looking to get it on playstation 5 rosy has a, a very big point there don't expect to have your account and all of your things right away <laughs> or maybe not ever you know hope for the expect the worst Love it. hope for the best Oh, uh, give me one second. I'm going to change over my headset and then we can move on to the next piece of news real quick. Well, Kennedy's busy. There's a speck of dust on my lens and it's bugging me. So I'm, I'm going to poke the camera, but I promise I'm not poking <laughs> you guys. Uh, all right. I've got my other headset on. I've been I've I've been live streaming literally all day and my wireless headset's just like charge me, please charge me uh all right so before we move on the last little thing i wanted to throw in was uh there is a uh deluxe edition pre-order in a standard edition for playstation um of course now if you pre-order you get that little uh reduced uh cost price and you don't have to worry about you know uh, well i mean the price is going to go up as more features are added to the game so always uh, worth pre-ordering or buying as soon as you can. But I guess there's merit to playing the full game too. So, <laughs> All right, let's jump on to the next piece of new. Did, did, they, did they say what the deluxe edition was? Uh, what, according what to this get? website, um, for the deluxe edition, it's $57. You get the early access. You get full release access. You get the hmm. pre-order title and avatars. And then you get the early access camo outfit, which is a special cosmetic that you get uh, for this. Um, and uh, let's see. Only, yep, on, only PlayStation. on PlayStation. Because uh, the camo cosmetic what a surprise. pack. And it looks all right. I'm pretty happy with my characters. Um, yeah. I'll have to check it out. But I just, uh, I really, I just really hate 
console exclusive items it, it just it bothers me so much like because everybody else is going to be able to see them and like i'm not going to go buy a ps5 just so i can play temtem on a ps5 like it, it, uh, i'm not going to get into that I, I just hate it i hate i hate console the completionist stuff. the completionist is all wants the items of course but I've, i always feel like you go the extra mile you get that special item and then two weeks later half the players have it so you don't even want to wear it anymore because you're no longer special wearing it. So you, oh yeah, like you go the, back to like whatever you were wearing before that you identify with. Yep, like the hats too, because also the hats. You know, you've got the 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 alpha tamer hat or whatever, but it's tradable. It's not account bound, which yes, doesn't that's... make any sense because you know not everybody that has it is uh, an alpha hero or whatever. Like... How? <laughs> well, no, anyway, I, I think that's a fair <laughs> thing to uh, discuss. Um, I'm not. I, I guess, like, I, I did see there was going to be the exclusive cosmetic, and I was like, I want the exclusive cosmetic. I don't have a PS5. I'm not buying a PS5 for this. And then I thought, like, wait, the last set that they introduced were, those were tradable, and, you know, you could buy them off of other players. And so it's going to be, like, all of these PS5 people entering, um, you know, getting, like, whatever this uh, cosmetic is and needing pansons, the completionists are going to be like, hey, I'll give you 60, 70, 80, 100,000 pansons for that outfit. And it's like, oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and bada bing, bada boom. I don't think it's going to yeah, be like it... that much of a struggle of the haves and have nots. Yeah, or, wait, I wait. Know. I, I want to say the hats it, it, and it, the it... hat knots. <laughs> 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 Only time I'll, we'll ever get to know that. Uh, How much does the alpha cap go for right now? Anyway, uh, does anybody currently know what the, I'll, what the I'll hat look it up, but I for? just saw. I know it was selling for like a million or something tamer, ridiculous. Tamer Cap. Um, this this offer was uh, want to sell earlier today at six o nine p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Four point five million uh, trading for the Tamer Cap. Uh, I'll look to see if I can get one more so we can compare it. Gross. Yeah, the hats and the hat knots. Another person um, current offer three million, and uh, they're looking for the best offer at four point five million. Yeah, it looks like their price is about um, three to four point five million pansons. Yeah, that's that's insane. And and, and the camo thing, it's not going to be as huge because there's not there's going to be more of them. Maybe I don't know than there was this. Depending, I mean, I know a lot of PS fives were pre ordered, so it, it's possible. But yeah, I mean, it, it's I don't know. It it just annoys me. These things, if they're I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that the PlayStation stuff is going to be account bound because I know how PlayStation works. Like like when they did Bungie, you know, you started to do the cross save stuff on Destiny 2. If you had the PS4, you could not use your PlayStation exclusive weapons on PC. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that these items are not going to be tradable, but we'll see. And that's if that's the case, it's it's gonna be gonna be rough. Yeah, we'll we'll see when it comes. Uh, but yeah, a exciting news. Tim Tim coming to PS Five. All right, the big news is the patch this week. We got a brand. Oh, excuse me. We got a brand new patch, and I am just I I've been bursting with excitement from this patch, all freaking week uh rarzy gaijin and i have been talking a lot do you want to like summarize the patch maybe for everybody and then we can go through like point by point i mean so many additions we got a new tem we got koish koi the cutest little fish in the world it has mm. all 12 types. it is it is mm. <laughs> it's running 12 different types it's the first digital to reach the game, and it has Synergy Master as well as Iridescence as its second trait. So Synergy Master is fantastic with water, toxic, fire, neutral. There's there's a lot of combinations there that you can use with other Thames to have an amazing lead. Along with Iridescence, essentially swaps what you take damage from. So let's say before, you know, water typically resists water, right? But if your Koish has Iridescence trait, water is going to do double damage to you. But that also means that things like grass that typically do double damage to water is going to do half damage. So that is 
very, very cool. It's going to add a lot of depth to the PvP side of things. But then with that Koish, they've also added a weekly fishing challenge. You can go to the fishing lodge in Kisua. I don't know the specific area name, but it's close to Kilma Peaks. Um, you can catch... Mm, they all have different patterns. Over 10,000 unique patterns, kind of like a spinda. <laughs> We're not supposed to talk about Pokemon. <clears throat> Over 10,000 unique patterns. And with the challenge each week, you have to try to find a specific pattern. You get rewards, that very nice rewards, for getting four out of five of the pattern uh, traits similar. And you get much, much more for getting five out of five. It's about a one in... It's a little under a one in 1,000 chance when you're going for this challenge to get that five out of five. So it does take a couple of minutes. Then something else that I am so excited about and so many other people are so excited about is the dojo rematches. You can now go back as long as you defeated a dojo before the weekly reset. You can go back to every single dojo once a week fight these dojo masters once again with kind of a mock pvp style you start off with your pick bands it uses a competitive team going into it but don't let it scare you away because it scales to your level if you don't have level 58 perfect tems you don't need them if 48 wait, is wait, your highest are you 45 it is your highest the level you're at it level scales to, to the, the highest level you are yeah, so if 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 you have 148 but you have 630s, it still scales to 48. So keep that in mind. You know, it scales to your highest level tem. Yeah, so you, you do want to at least level yourself out, but it's I mean, I think that you'll be able to figure it out. It might take a couple of tries to figure out exactly the tems that they're running, how you're going to build your team around it, but you can always go out, catch some tems, TV train if you haven't already, because I absolutely recommend you do. And it is the reward if you beat them first try you get 6960 suns along with pause for a dramatic effect here along with luma hunting radars these radars are so fantastic for the luma hunting community since they increased the odds a little bit to one in ten thousand these radars give you about a 16 percent chance of finding a luma in just 400 encounters You'll get a boost in SVs when you're early on, so you're going to get those nice SV Thames as well. Your Lumas will have good stats. You'll have times 5 and then times 10 Luma odds throughout this radar. You can get mm. two Ys. You can get crystals. Gaijin Boo got a crystal last week. Can confirm. It is possible <laughs> to get a crystal. And Presby yeah, Kennedy got a 2 Y. So how about we, it how about we uh, take this right at the start? Um, like uh, Rosie was saying, fishing. Fishing at the Nuru Lodge and a new Tim Tim. Uh, oh, go ahead, Gaijin. Oh, man. Nope. I can't say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. You're oh, it's fine. all right. Keep if, going. It's, if it's a dirty joke, you know you get one per show, so make sure it's worth it. No. No, it's 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 too <laughs> too inappropriate. All right. Sorry. Keep, keep talking about the, the, the so... Nuru Lodge. <laughs> Uh, fishing at the Nuru Lodge, it is a new mechanic that was introduced, like Rarzi said. And uh, yeah, like you can, you get a fish, it's a small little quest, you get a fishing rod, and you get to go in, in this water, and like Tim Tim, you can sit and fish. Uh, no, you can you can fish in Dennis, too. Um, You can also, yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah, you get the yeah, normal you get Thames the normal for Thames. surfing. You don't get anything super special for it. But, um, yeah, it, it's just very pleasant to, like, sit down and uh, fish for me. And, um, yeah, then Koish was added to the game to add just, like, all of the different types and varieties. So w what do you guys think about Koish? And I know that's a big question. So before we answer, like, you know, what do you think as far as the state of the game? What's your favorite type of koish what's your favorite type of koish because there's one koish it's which is the new tim tim for each different type water digital water electric water fire etc 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 what is your favorite type of koish 
I, I haven't I haven't seen them all. I mean, I've seen digital and 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 melee, but I haven't seen them all. So I, I don't know what they all look like. Um, so I I I I can't say. I don't I don't have a have a option. Okay, I I have a couple that I'm kind of in love with. If I pick a number one, it is the fire quish, but electric is so close up there. Along with neutral, I, they're all so good. The synergies that they provide are fantastic. The max speed scunch, 113 speed, fire quish, quetzalenyo synergy will just destroy everything. It outspeeds Kinu. It, it's so good. I, yeah, I'm very happy I with like quish. so. The fire quish, it gets synergy master, it learns Quetzal Quetzalino. It can, it has a hundred base damage move. It can do turn one that synergizes up to 115. Or no, 110, and then it synergizes up to 115. Uh, if it gets synergy and it has synergy master, it deals 25% additional damage plus the stab bonus, which is 50% additional damage. And if you're running a fire chip, that is a little bit more. And then if you get your scunch to perfect jab before, laud, laud, that, that Quetzalino is so hard hitting. It's uh, it's great. Um, But for me, I, I actually think the water koish is probably my favorite. Um, just the straight water koish. Uh, it learns a really weird move. I think it's called like cold water stream or something like that. And it it has a it brings another freeze to the game. It brings another uh, cold condition. And so I've been just I don't know. I've always wanted to run like a super pressury freeze team. And we're just inching very, or we're inching closer to the dream being a reality and freeze not being cheese, but actually being like a real strategy. So I, I think that's a cool thing. And there's these quishes come in so many different varieties, so many different types. There's so many team building things you can do with them. Uh, as far as the fishing quest goes, how do you all feel about the fishing quest? I know there's been some love and some hate for it. Are we talking about the four yes. five 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 or the just in the four, general the uh, original the, fishing? I'm sorry, quest. the <laughs> weekly fishing quest where you have to. Uh, they give you there's a board inside of the Nuru Lodge, and uh, on the board it says uh, it each player this is randomly generated. It puts five traits out um, that Koish can spawn with, like a tail, a fin with this color, you know, this size of uh, of um, side fins, uh, this color of the um large pattern on its tail and it put it collects five of these traits at random and um and generates a fish for each person and you have to match a you have to fish up capture and turn in a koish that has each um all five of those traits which it turns out to be about a 108 or a 1 in 864 chance to fish up, you know, the exact quish that you need. So personally, I feel like the reward is absolutely worth the effort. Uh, with it, it is rather slow encounters since you do have to cast your fishing pole and then accurately hit F or, you know, A, X on your controller three times, which is harder than it seems when you're distracted. But but eight eight hundred sixty six it it's comparative to the rewards that you get. I mean, you can get the egg technique uh, hacks for your lumas. You can get trait swaps. You can get just general old um, telomere hacks. You know, the first week I think I got speed and attack along with photosynthesis etc. So you get a nice little chunk of pan suns between like six and eight thousand is what I typically see. Uh, along with fruits, candies, clothing, furniture. So it's definitely worth the effort if you just want to spend, I mean, sometimes it might take five hours, a little more, but it's worth it. Or or, or you, you could get really unlucky and have it yeah. take all week. But, you know, because it, it's, still, it's still the chance. You know, there, there's a one in 800 chance. And, and while that's way better than a one in 10,000 chance, I mean, you know, I... I think the rewards that they provide are are really good. I mean, because what you you do four hundred releases generally for one telomere hack, maybe two if you're lucky. Um, so I mean, I think I, just the fact that you can get 
egg technique courses, which can alone sell for, depending on what you get, a hundred plus thousand pan suns. And then you get some plus Jesus. Yeah. And uh, some telomere hacks. Like, I don't know. Uh, I think as, as much of, you know, a grind as it can be like temtem is providing people with options just because it's there doesn't mean you have to do it um, you know like because people are complaining because there's nothing to do so now there's stuff to do and yeah you know a lot of it is grinding because that's that that that's what these games are like if, if, if you're playing these games and expecting no grind i don't i don't i don't understand but I think mm -hmm. I like it personally, is is my opinion. Plus it corrected me last, I guess last week when I was talking about the fishing, uh, he said, it's not a grind, it's RNG. But I feel like, I feel like it is a grind. I feel like that's what Luma hunting always used to be. It, it was RNG, but it, we would it just is. grind it out. And eventually, you know, if, if you continue to bang your head against that wall, something, you're going to see stars. <laughs> eventually you'll see stars usually when you're passing out but still yeah it, it rng is grinding that that's what it is because in order to like it you know you can't just go in and get one encounter and say oh i didn't get it moving on like that's not how it works that's not how any of this works yeah <laughs> and you'll usually get the four out of five pretty quickly I see a lot of people getting it within their first 20, 30 minutes, typically. It took me an hour and a half today, but yeah, yeah it was I, fairly I quick. I say on the uh, Koi spawns, I think the fishing quest is a, um, or the weekly fishing quest, I think it's a good last thing to do. Um, for me, uh, personally, I did my, all of my dojo rematches uh, first this week, Um and then, well, and I guess last week I did the dojo mass, uh, I did the dojo rematches first, and then I did my, um, my radars because those are, uh, you know, time gated, like they can only, they only last for so long. And then I did like knowing that, you know, I had to get my radars done in X amount of time. And then I was just like, all right, with the rest of my time this week, I'm going to do the RNG like fishing quests because it's like it's one in 864 you're probably gonna get it if you set aside a few hours to it but it's rng you know it is possible for you to spend 10 hours fishing and not see you know the coish that you need on for it's and it's unfortunate but it is what it is that said um i agree with rarzi like I, I believe that this, um, I believe that the weekly quests, the rewards are just way too amazing um, to not just set a, set aside at least like four hours in your schedule. Um, you know, if you don't have like a lot of gaming time, make sure you put a little bit aside and definitely try for uh, this because those egg uh, technique courses that you can get from it. Um, people sell those all the time on the Discord channel from, uh, you know, 100,000 to 400,000, uh, pan suns is what I've been seeing them go for this week, which is cr 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 crazy, uh, in a good way. All right. Uh, do you guys want to move on to the dojo rematches? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I think I I, I think we're done All on right. on, on <laughs> Yeah, oh, I mean, we can probably come back and talk about this a little bit later. But yeah, so the next thing that got added, um, Rarzi gave us the rundown was the dojo rematches. Of uh, oh my goodness mm -hmm. gracious, there was so much hate and love and hate and love and hate and love and hate and love about these dojo matches. It was a mixed bag of emotions, that's for sure. The uh, the community definitely was yeah, definitely was probably split about fifty fifty on it. I think. <laughs> yeah, I was seeing some like I was seeing some things posted on Reddit. I didn't even put any of those posts inside of like the show notes. Partly because I was like real pressed for time, but also partly because I don't feel uh, a lot of like the feedback was done in a way of that was uh, I guess <laughs> helpful. And so uh, yeah, the dojo rematches. Um, push people to do competitive matches you have to do a competitive pick and ban phase against the uh, dojo leader and the ai is really good about um 
I guess, stopping, like, the Pokemon mentality of just, like, oh, I'm going to the fire gym. Let me bring a water Temtem. And it's just, like, oh, you know what? I'm going to ban your water Temtem. You can't bring that into the match. And it's just, like, wait, I want my water Temtem. It's, like, you can't use your water Temtem. And uh, so you actually have to have, like, a little bit of strategy going into these. Um, And I feel like, I feel like that like the torch that set a lot of people off was just like why do i have to do pick and bands <laughs> oh my goodness gracious uh so I, I i feel like we're all kind of in alignment on this but where do each of you fall on uh this go ahead rosie i absolutely love every single thing about the dojo remix i think that it's a fantastic way to bring players that are newer or luma hunters a little bit closer to pvp because I, the 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 truth is on twitch at least temtem is driven by its competitive scene the the luma hunters have done a fantastic job of keeping consistency in the scene but every time that we see a stream explode off with 100 plus viewers it's either a very famous streamer to us or it's a competitive tournament so I think that the more new players we can convert over to enjoying PvP, even if they're not the best players in the world, even if it's just a hobby for them, yeah, the better. I, I, I agree with that. Um, so I'll I'll play devil's advocate on this, but uh, before I do play devil's advocate, I do want to say um, I love this feature because uh, it is really uncomfortable being pushed into an aspect of the game that you know you're not familiar with. But uh, because of that, it forces people to engage in the community. And it's like, I made a friend in Tim Tim this past week that I talk to about every other day about Tim Tim now. And it's like, I would have never talked to them. I would have never met them had this change not been implemented. And we've been talking since Tim Tim Kennedy. I don't know what fair. you're talking about. This, this isn't a new um, thing. And so it is you, Maluna. It is. Uh, but yeah, so it pushes people to try like new aspects of the game and i can get behind that that said devil's advocate here um so putting my mindset into some of the people that might be frustrated about this uh i feel like the radars are so crazy so you, when you beat the when you beat the um when you beat the dojo leaders the radars are, you get a radar that lets you Luma hunt a specific Tim, and the radar scales up. Uh, the first 50 encounters you get after the first 50 encounters, all the Tims you encounter will have a minimum SV value of 10. And then when you get up to 100 encounters, that SV value goes to 20. Um, when you get up to 200 encounters, you have five times Luma odds. And when you get up to 300 encounters, you have 10 times Luma odds. The um luma hunting with the radar is so incredibly good that i feel it is it is the pressure of a reward being too good that it forces you to kind of do it it was kind of like luma 2 i week where um where it, any aspect of the game you were in you had to hunt luma 2i just because it was an insult to the rest of your time not to luma hunt 2i so uh, with the dojo leaders, if you beat the dojo leader first time, you get um, 7,000 pan suns. You get a radar. If you don't like the radar, you can vendor it. Um, for all together, for about 15 minutes of your time, you make um, 8,000 pan suns. And I don't think there's anything else in the game that can give you that much money. Uh, and then on top of getting the radar to hunt like a super rare thing. And so that said, for some people who are collectors who, you know, don't follow the competitive scene and it really hurts to be pushed into doing these battles and not having the option. Well, you do have the option not to do them, but it's like walking, it's like walking down the street and just seeing somebody in a Ferrari and it's just like, I want a Ferrari. And it's like, oh, well, if you want a Ferrari, you've got to go, you know, climb that mountain right over there. And it's just like, but I can't climb that mountain. It's like, oh, well, it's fine. You don't need a Ferrari then. And I feel like I feel like that there's a social dynamic in an MMO 
of seeing other people do stuff and interacting with other people doing stuff that like that interaction there's value onto itself that cannot be explained you know and uh i i feel like that's where a lot of vitriol um of some of the people being pushed to do competitive uh was at again i love this but i love this change but still i don't know i feel like if we don't play devil's advocate on a, just a little bit of this it's not doing justice to some people who did have legitimate concerns about this I definitely sympathize with that pretty large section of the community. I also just kind of feel like it's a monster battling yeah. game. And and the you know, we're we're lucky that it does scale to your level and it, it's right. not the most difficult thing in the world. So even newer players can usually get it done within a couple of attempts, and it is still good pan suns and really good reward. I under I completely understand if if a luma hunting player and an economy player doesn't enjoy competitive and and I really do understand that like they would prefer to have something non battling oriented and I think TM trainer said that he was even okay with that on a personal level but you know crema is crema and they don't necessarily do what an individual developer wants um, they, they have their own plans in place and we can't see the full picture until it's been released. You know, there, there's a lot of things that they can modify and, and play around with right now or even add one feature and not add its partner feature right away because it's not finished. And once this game is fully released, there might actually be a very good system that plays to everybody's strengths I and agree. not just Luma hunters who are willing to grind or competitive yeah. players. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead, Boo. Go so, ahead. Oh, oh. my turn. My turn. So, I I also think that the dojo rebattle is fantastic. I I I think they are a great addition. Um. I I personally I I'm not a PvP guy. I've I've never really done it. It's not that I don't want to. I'm just lazy. Um. I I don't TV train. I I had a bunch of competitive times gifted to me and and they were sitting in my box not doing anything because I, I i don't want a tv train to me it's boring it's monotonous and you know that's kind of strange coming from a guy who spins in circles but you know still um like you know now now that they've added this feature and they added the radars behind this um I, I went and I did do the dojo battles and and while I did get my butt handed to me like eight times by uh, Musa, I believe it was, um, you know, it, it, it was still a fun experience. Um, I, I did enjoy it, but I can definitely understand why people would be frustrated, especially if they weren't expecting something like this and never really intended to do PvP or, you know, any, any, anything like that, which, let's be real, this is PvE in a competitive setting. Um, so it it's still AI. It's not a person with irrational, erratic thoughts that you might not really be able to predict or whatever. But, like, um, I do feel that the one thing that this needs to to bridge the gap is the ability for rental teams uh, i i think that they should add the possibility of renting a team specifically for the dojo have like three different competitive teams to choose from they all have their own merits or whatever and you know leave it like that um i i think that that would be helpful to a lot of people who are like me don't want to go do any tv training and i've never really been to the earth shrine or the the water shrine uh so i don't do leveling either um you know i beat the story and my attempts are the level that they are and that's it but uh i i just think that adding rental teams would make it a lot easier for a lot of people but still makes you go and do competitive so that people can actually experience that because i feel like there are a lot of people that would try it but are insecure about their own skill 
insecure about watching battling somebody else and then them being like oh man i totally trashed this noob today on the ladder um and then you know insulting or making fun of you or whatever but like you know i i think it's i think it's pretty cool and i really enjoyed it and i really like the radars they are amazing but don't let kennedy lie to you this reward is not anything like to why week it's not that's a lie because you can go and battle every single dojo leader and get platypet fomu just base level unexciting not so wowing radars there's a chance to get five percent like kennedy and i, I did but those I would like odds to are not to that, as great. And I want to say, um, I'm not saying it's too I weak in terms of you're going to get amazing, amazing rewards. I'm the reason why I said it's like too I weak, too I weak dictated what type of content you could do. Because if you were a Luma hunter, obviously you're Luma hunting too I and Psy Park. If you're trying to make pan suns or anything, mm -hmm. the best pan suns you could make doing pan suns per hour was luma hunting to why trying to get a 2i and selling it for you know the millions and millions of pan suns um what when i say this is like to why week as far as the incentives um you can spend you can spend of an hour running around to these dojos and battling all of them and getting uh five times seven thousand is uh come on brain do math thirty five thousand pan like what what else in game can you make 35,000 fan suns in an hour doing like unless you're the most godly yeah pvp Nothing. player in the world getting cues like every couple minutes finishing the match in 10 minutes and just going am like yeah and that's let's be clear that's a that's so 35,000 a, yeah. a week multiply that by 52 weeks and that's one point i don't that, i don't how many how, don't many, how, how much is that um, how many millions i can pull up a calculator but I, that's what i'm saying i'm saying that this is incentivizing <laughs> in the terms of like if you want to tackle content in this game if you want to buy stuff for your house if you want to buy tims to use on ladder if you want to buy fruits to tv train your tims this is the this is the most appealing content that is considerate of your time and you get that big injection of pan suns to go do whatever you want to do um okay gotcha i i, I was yeah. misinterpreting but i i still don't think it's too That's high fair. level yeah but it is very exciting. so if you do this it, it is very every exciting single week, all i mean because you brought up something that i just wanted to say the math is 1.8 30 million pan suns that's crazy for all year all year yeah all granted year. that is a year that's a year but for an hour's worth of your time a week you can end up making 1.8 million pan suns over the course of a year so you know there's that mm -hmm. you know you might not be playing for a year or however long but you know if you love the game you love the game and that's a decent amount of pants to make in a week but the radar yes. is the most exciting part don't don't yeah uh, okay so that. let's um let's go to the radars and we'll come back to the uh postal service oh uh, so the radars this is this is crazy um we've discussed it a little bit when you beat these dojo leaders you get a um they give you a radar of a Tim that spawns of like the type of Tims that are in their dojo. So if you beat the water wind dojo, you can get a water or a um, wind uh, Tim Tim to go Luma hunt it. And the radar scales, it's chaining. So the more encounters you do, the bigger or rather the more chance of a Luma you have at getting um, all the way up to 10 times the encounter rate. Um, and then in addition to that, or rather not in an addition, you can only do five, 400 encounters and then the radar breaks automatically. Uh, and the radar attracts Tims and it makes them spawn in the overworld. So when you go radar hunt a Tim, um, as long as you're paying attention and running into the spawns properly, you're only running into the radar Tims. Um, it is kind of wild. I. I think somebody did the math on this um, in one of my streams, and they said that the radar comes down to a 17% chance at a Luma, like all things considered, all 400 encounters, the way the probability works out. 
at the end of the day, each radar gives you a 17% chance at the Luma you're trying to get. Um, I don't know if that's right or correct. I don't know how to check the math. Probability has been my worst area of math. <laughs> like, yeah, I think it was like 15.86% yeah. or something like that. But I can 15... give you specifics. I saw Solis has done the math a couple of times. Just let me find it. Yeah, because I mean, 15.6 or whatever it is, like for 400 encounters, pretty good. And I mean, maybe it's just me, but I would rather hunt 5% Lumas with a 15% chance of getting one over the course of 400 encounters versus hunting for six months or months and never getting anything. I was in the Valash area, the Mictlin Mines, looking for Luma Valash for two and yeah. a half months. No Luma, no nothing, no Lapinite, which has an 85 or whatever, 80% spawn. No Valash, no Azurok, nothing. No Bun Bun, no Valor, to and from, zilch. I didn't get Jack for two months. I would rather spend four, uh, 24 to... Do you, 28 hours or whatever do you want to explain, it equates to um, be Gaijin, how the looking works for between the different percentage encounters or the percentage radars i mean i don't really know how the time works i just know that the five percent radars is roughly around 24 to 26 or whatever hours yeah time wise um, but uh, you know obviously the hundred yeah. percents are really quick you know you, you can get a hundred percent done real fast 400 encounters on 100% is nothing. Even 75, 60%, they spawn really fast. Um, but obviously, 5%, 10%, they take a bit longer. But, you know, it, it's still very doable. Um, it's, it's, it's like micro Luma hunting, and it's amazing because, you know, you, yeah. you, there's an end. There's you, you know where it ends. You know, like, you see the exact point when it ends. Okay, I have 400 encounters. Fantastic. I need to get to two, what is three, 200 encounters to get five times Luma odds. And I need to get to 300 encounters to get to 10 times Luma odds. So between 200 and 300, five times Luma odds for every encounter. Between 300 and 400, 10 times Luma odds for every encounter. And, you know, you, you see where it ends. And it, it's nice. It, it's, it's really refreshing. And somebody like myself who's truth be told been really burnt out on actual luma hunting yeah i i love this i love the radar this too. Is amazing um, and it's fantastic uh, something gaijin mentioned real quick that i want to make sure the listeners have um available to them the way the radars work the higher the tim tim's chance at spawning in the wild so if it's like a 100 percent tim tim and you activate your radar there the tims are going to spawn like every 20 seconds running around you and you can get an encounter yeah oh, that's what um, you meant and so gotcha. the lower okay. that gets the longer it takes tims to spawn so when you were hunting a a two rot a two eye that has a five percent spawn in the wild um it the radar i don't i don't know what the formula or what generates it but it's i i i, I calculated it yesterday while i was doing some i did about 10 to 15 encounters and and you know timed in between each encounter it was roughly between three and a half to seven minutes yeah, between encounters um, because it has such a like a low spot so rate. yeah somewhere in there which is still way faster than you would normally find five percent in the wild if you were hunting yourself the the five percent encounter rates in those areas are horrible first of all encounter rates in five percent spawns are horrible go hang out at the top of windward fort for a while i i know hunted, how you feel uh pocus at full odds um at 1800 for about 45 minutes and i was like this is garbage i hate this <laughs> this is the worst thing i've ever done and i was done i was out of there i got like Hot take from know, Kennedy the like Luma six, Hunter. 45 like minutes. This is focus trash. Encounters or seven focus encounters. I was like, wait, wait, wait. That's insane. Seven I go an hour in with zero minutes? or one. You had really good luck. You've got seven focus encounters in your th over 40. <laughs> Get out of <laughs> here. So good. Leave. Leave. Don't, don't ever don't talk ever about talk Luma to me Hunter. Or my son again. <laughs> It took me 58 minutes to find my first focus when it first came out. Oh my goodness, I ran straight gracious. up to the patch. I wanted to get one. It's going to be so cool. And then an hour later, I find my... And I killed it. I, 
oh, what no. I did, I I caught, I kept, I got one one s or uh, one fifty sv one, and it had like reduced burp because the stat spawned really wonkadelically. So I couldn't even breed it because it was at um it was at six out of uh eight furt. I got one good one, and I say good, that's quotation marks. And then I bred all of the others, which like I just kept them. I bred all of I bred all oh. of the furt away, and I went to the start of the game, and I just gave away all the eggs and the stuff to people. I I want to bring this up just in case Q Angel or anybody else watching this has experienced this. Uh, Shadows and I both, while we were hunting our five percents, if there are two crystal or two five percent Thames in the overworld, and you encounter one, and it happens to be a double encounter, when you finish that encounter, the other overworld Tem is gone. I had this happen numerous times. I might have the explanation for that one. Uh, something we were talking about is even if you let them spawn over and over again and don't take any of those encounters, it'll spawn six and then one will despawn and another respawn. But it's going to be the same Tem ID that respawns. So I think that when there are two of them that encounter a double encounter, it just takes those two IDs of the Thames that respond and puts them to you in one. So it is faster in a sense to take every encounter as they appear rather than letting them build up to six total on the screen so and then just try to find them all. I was only letting three. two though. I was only letting two though. And yeah, even when the last two, time it happened to me was when I found my Luma crystal and the second overworld was not a, was not a, was not a Luma. So um, I don't know. <laughs> it just it just <laughs> seemed odd to me because when I was encountering um, Zephys and Volfies, that was not happening. They were not despawning any other spawns. I could let six load up, encounter all six, and that was that. And then I'd, I'd wait for six more to spawn and do it again. But with the five percent spawns, they were combining, which was not something I experienced in either radar before that. Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I saw that too. Um, I, I don't know. These radars are so new, but I love them. Um, I I got I, I did got a Magmus radar for my first one uh, just to test it out, and I didn't get a um, Luma Maschio, and I wasn't at all salty about that. And then um, I got a 2 2Y radar for my second, and I got the 2Y near the end of the radar, but I think one of the coolest things about these radars is um, for the SV weeks, you only get like 36 cards in Cypart. You get as many, well, I mean, you get as many cards as you want because they're Tim cards, but you get 400 encounters and 300 of those encounters are at a minimum SV value of 20. Like these radars are so crazy good for breeding stock. Like I was just, I only reason I did my 2Y radar was to get um, perfect. Uh, perfect SV two eyes, so I could start breeding them. And then, like, I, I was just chit chatting with Stream, and then randomly came across the Luma two eye. I was like, "Let's go." So, a... can I ask about that yeah. for the breeding stock? If the minimum SV value is twenty, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have more fifty I... SVs, does it? So, is it actually good for breeding stock, or is uh, it just like a mental I, I thing? think it is. Um... I think it is because whatever algorithm determines this is how my mind works and maybe it might not be it might be you might be correct in this it might be a mental thing um i've it was my understanding that the algorithm that determines what gets added to stats like a tim tim gets generated all of its stats are you know ones and then it randomly uh adds up from the base value um, and then whatever its SVs are, are what its SVs are from there. So, right. So it has a, instead of a one in 50 chance, it has a, it has a, so it, it, yeah, it takes away it, 20 possibilities, meaning 50 has a yeah, better opportunity. So 50 to happens happen. more often because that minimum value is 20. And so if it adds 30 to it, it's 50. If it adds 20 to it, you know, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I can yeah, confirm because I was I, I I was catching crystals in the last hundred, uh, and and I had found multiple with with double fifties 
usually with only one fruit missing. Um, I didn't find any breeding pairs. Had really great stats outside of that too. So, you know, I I think it's it's very likely. You know, you're going to get better chances. It's not amazing. You know, it takes away twenty possibilities for the stat to be, but you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, we can move on from we can move on from the radars and let's talk about the wish you well. Oh wait, didn't I say we were going to come back to something that we skipped over? I don't remember what. Oh, the postal service. We'll do the postal service real quick and then we'll go to the wish. We can handle both of these loot pools. All right. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, this patch is just it's very it's very exciting. Um. All right. So we got a uh we got new ways to make money in game. Um, we summarized this earlier. Uh, there's a daily quest. You get to deliver packages of food to people around the um, temple, or rather the archipelago. And then uh, you, once you complete the quest, you get a randomly generated loot reward from different uh, loot tables based on, you know, what type of quest you get. Uh, all in all, it's... It, it it's I, I I'm I'm on the fence about these uh packages and postal service. Uh I've been letting you guys speak first on the other ones, so I'll take this one first. Uh you know, I've I've loved this patch. Of uh, these packages have screwed me more than anything else. Uh I got the the first day I did it, I got five hundred pan suns. Barely worth the time to, you know, run around and do it. Second day I did it, I got the three rewards from it and uh, or rather not the three rewards but the deliver three packages and um they implemented a later patch that the more re the more packages you uh get assigned to deliver the better your rewards get but this was before that patch so i delivered three packages and got 600 pan suns and then the third day i delivered one package i got 600 pan suns and two fruits and i was like okay and then today i think i delivered a package and i got like a thousand pan suns and two fruits and i was like thank you finally something somewhat decent i don't know how i feel about these postal packages um because it's like if you get the three that feels really good but you don't always have a chance to get the three packages uh I... it is yeah it is daily so if if you got incredible rewards every single day then That's it would just fair. flood the market with stuff I think the the fact that you can get the wish you well coins is pretty cool, and it's just a nice you little can get boost wish you well to your coins from the postal service. Yes, yes, you can. I got three of them two days ago. Rarzy, yeah. so, that's like that's uh, nice. I think this is the this is the thing that and, and, and you know I know you aren't doing it, but you know the whole get it 500 600 just measly amounts of pan suns like you know but like uh, so many people complain about not getting amazing rewards all the time and it's like imagine imagine getting a 5 5 fish was just like that imagine finding a luma just like that like there'd be no, there'd be no purpose like you know like working for something and eventually getting a, a good reward for it feels good. Being handed everything in the game feels horrible, and the game is pointless and disappointing. There, 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 there's nothing to do. Yeah. Um. You know, I, I just feel like sometimes people have this expectation where I put money in the game, I deserve stuff. And that's not how it works. You bought the game knowing. A lot of stuff is RNG based. And if you don't like that, that's kind of unfortunate for you. You know, if you didn't play it for two hours, <laughs> refund it. But <laughs> as far as like the packages go, um, I guess I'm not upset that I don't get good rewards for it. It's just for me, w one of the things I think about is like when I go there and I get like the thing that instantly clicks in my brain is like you deliver one package and it's like, okay, where's the package? In Zadar and Dennis. So literally the opposite side of the world, the furthest possible place I could run. All right, I'll deliver it. And then it's like 500 pansons. And I've gotten that so consistently that it just makes me think like, okay, let me go get my package. Deliver one package. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go free Tim over in, you know, at the Nauru Lodge instead. And in the same time I'd run there, I'd get 500 pansons from free Timming. So it's like, for me, I guess my brain tells me I only want to do the reward when I have like the three 
delivery. So I'd be very interested to see what the loot tables are on the like the smaller tables. I mean, you can still get like your your chances are better the more packages okay, you so have they all of getting a the better reward. Table? I didn't, but you I can didn't still know that. Get... I honestly, didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe so. Presby Kennedy is just like this reward is horrible, and my <laughs> sadness is immeasurable. And my day it, it can be disheartening when when you do it for a week, even two weeks straight, and you don't find anything that would, you feel was worth your time. I totally get that. It can be disheartening to not get anything for your time spent. <laughs> Take it from a guy who Luma hunted for nine weeks to find a second Acronox. There you go. Hey. <laughs> and then you yeah. just gave it all away. So this, uh, yep. let's jump into the loot pools and the wish you well coins because that's like the next thing since we're kind of talking about it. Uh, they changed the way, well, not changed, they implemented a new idea of uh, loot. There are different loot tables in the game now and different activities pull from those loot tables and give you like randomly generated rewards from them. Um, so, you know, free Tim has its consistent reward every week. But doing your dailies and weeklies, you get um, stuff off of these loot tables. And they're super cool. Uh, and so what my thinking was, uh, and they're called loot pools. What my thinking was why I didn't like the one package is I thought there was a separate loot pool for the one package. And I felt like the loot pet pool for the one package wasn't worth the time. But for the three packages, definitely, like, worth the time. But the loot pool for, you know, the weekly quest, the four out of four, um, I've had, I've just had, like, for everything else, like, the four out of four, the weekly quest, and anything that it hasn't been these one packages, I've really enjoyed the system. Yeah, I, it's definitely... It's not very much work, and you have the opportunity for unbelievable re returns. I'm you know, you're sure not going to gotten... get. Go yeah, ahead, you're sorry. not going to get the unbelievable returns on day one, unless. I mean, if you think we have no idea what the odds are, but say it's similar to like a Luma, we have over a million total players in Temtem. Tem. How many of them do you think encountered a Luma their very <laughs> first Fair. encounter? statistically it's a lot mm -hmm. exactly so you just have to do it a couple of times and you'll probably get lucky eventually i hate to break it to all of you this is not children's baseball we don't all win we don't all get a trophy you know it it's not the way the world really works so <laughs> you know yeah that's you fair. get something. You do get a participation trophy, the but fun. you don't get the the the, yeah. the the World Cup. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, have either of you used Wish You Well coins? I have three currently, and I've been too terrified to go use yeah. them. So I have not had very good luck necessarily. I kind of have. I I did get one uh, Hocus Pheromone, which was pretty nice to see. Um. Other than that, I mean, I, I think I've thrown five or six of them now, and four of them were just between 400 and 1,000 pan suns. So it, it's, it doesn't have fantastic odds, but there's still potential. I, I think I also got two Tataru pheromones, which I'm happy with. I love yeah, little baby. tater tot. But it is 100% spawn rate, so I'm curious... You know, I guess my thought is if you get pheromones for 100%, maybe you're supposed to use them in park. I don't know if they're usable in there, but, you know, say like a Lumatadaru week comes by and it's got 60% spawn rate because they are decreasing spawn rates now, sometimes, not all the time, for uh, for these park temps. So maybe boost it back up to 100 with that times I've heard two times with three odds. The pheromones, I've heard, I've heard. Because a lot of this patch, a lot of like the information we have as a community is conjecture. I've heard the reason you want the pheromones is to save them for your radars, and pheromones actually increase the speed at which Tim's um, spawn in the overworld with your radar. Like if you go after 5%, you want to bring the pheromones with you, and the pheromones are. I have actually heard interesting. the exact okay. opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, again. Because it is all conjecture. conjecture. So what I had heard was that the pheromones only impacted your grass water cave encounters okay. and not the yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with your um with your source on that because uh even though you didn't give a source, just because your voice sounds very trustworthy. So 
<laughs> yeah, basically anybody listening to the podcast, don't <laughs> don't take that advice from Kennedy. I'm basically sure, uh, like Isosceles is in chat right now saying it, it's it's the opposite of ascent, you know, which makes it so Temtem avoid you in the wild, whereas pheromones would attract them to you. So it, it's basically the reverse of ascent, essentially. Which which makes the most sense to me. Okay, yeah, yeah, I could uh, see that. Um, Gaijin, did you want to say anything else on loot pools before we? Or, or I'm sorry, wish you well coins before we jump uh, forward. I mean, I uh, do the loop does the wish you well coins award furniture I as don't well? No, it's probably possible because I know that the five five and the four five can award furniture, and I'm pretty sure I've seen people get furniture that's not even released yet. I'm pretty sure somebody got a Rowiri sized chair, and I've never seen that in the stores. Um, so I think that's pretty awesome. Like, because I love that you can get cosmetics. Yeah, from agreed. This. I'm really hoping Tatru backpack is in Tatru. there. Give it to me, baby. Luma Tatru backpack. You diet. You I mean, well, yeah. you need diets, but yeah. <laughs> Speaking, if you need, if you need white, I did. Uh, I know somebody who got a white dye today. Ooh. All right, uh, let's jump into the patch notes. We're not going to read these all on stream. Uh, we'll just try and pick out some things we didn't uh, discuss. Uh, so let's see. I will pull this up on stream, and I'm going to scroll through it. And uh, if you each want to pull up the patch notes, if there's anything we didn't discuss that you want to discuss, we can. There was a weird, weird change this patch, and I just don't even know what to say about it. Um, there was a balance change. It was a singular balance change. Uh, Grumble got Goring added to its egg technique set. So Grumble and Grumpers can now learn Goring from breeding. And I just don't know who the person is out there that's not only running physical Grumper, Me. but is running physical settling Grumble. It's you, Rarzi? Me. <laughs> I'm not doing the crumble. I am. I have. I have the I am speed Ricky Tan, <laughs> fifty speed SV max speed Grumper. To, uh, listen, if you turbo, if you turbo two times, your normal prio has two hundred eighty base speed, which means one turbo is usually enough to outdo Volaren. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. And and if it's um if you do max speed grumper, you outspeed the special attacking grandpas, which I don't think we're gonna see as much of anymore, but I still use it. I love it. Because most special attacking grandpas don't give it the speed because they're not using HKS, they're using tornado instead. They want special attack so instead of speed. Do you go grumper what, out do, speed? Do you go max speed, max uh, max speed, half special attack, half attack in that? So you don't actually have to half it because Grumper has decent special attack compared to its physical attack. So um, so I do more in physical attack and then a little bit less in special attack and special attack is still a higher damage output. I'm not going to be one hit KOing anything with this split, but it means that I can do decent damage to anything. So if I double into it, you know, I can usually <laughs> kill a, a bird in one to two turns. I can often kill i want you to know rc i adore you and you know <laughs> how much incredible respect i have for you your stamina your knowledge about tim tim and your dedication to the temporium team this is the silliest thing i've ever heard in my entire life <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i i absolutely jump behind some of the more meme aspects of competitive when it first changes because i love to just push that stuff when when we started to do 1SV Thames, it was mostly speed to pair with Naga, but I I wanted 1SV special attack move flank to do full support. So I have I have a one special attack move flank with double edge. ETE made a bunch of them. Uh, I, I run cage execution, um, tenderness, and something else. Execution is the only attacking <laughs> technique. And and it has no attack TVs. <laughs> it's just a pure support. I love doing stuff like that. I've got Lawalis that'll do anything <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. 
I could it's go true. I've seen it. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. All right. So that was my question. Who asked for this? Apparently it was Rarcy. Me. Uh, Oh, I saw that in I saw that as a leak and I got so excited. I sent ETE messages before the patch came out saying if this is true, I will pay you 50,000 oh points on Oh my um, god. There's only one <laughs> other thing I wanted to point out in the patch notes uh before I do. Did was there anything either of you two wanted to point out? Okay. Um, oh, really? the other thing that um is important that we didn't discuss uh, Yaw has posted in the Discord before um, his uh, theory for Free Tim. And uh, Free Tim will now have a limit of pan suns earned from uh, releases each week. And so now once you hit your Free Tim cap and you go over that, uh, the Free Tim Society will not pay you additional pan suns for everything you release over and beyond that. Of uh, According to Krima, this isn't going to be a huge change to the economy. Um, there was... I, I think y'all said less, or not y'all, uh, Krima said, um, and I've got it up on screen, uh, less than 5% of the active population was taking advantage of this. So it's going to ideally not hurt many people and ideally, you know, stop the bots and, you know, the few people who are getting, yeah, like super RMT. crazy about this. Because 5% of those people were very likely botters yeah. and RMTers because it, it's been an issue for a while. So uh, I, I do personally like that change, you know, because there are other methods to, to make pan suns if you, if you really want, you know, like I know free timing for a lot of people is, is pretty simple and pretty easy and it's, you know, something they can do, but most people never really went above anybody i know never really went above the the limit because why would you you know what what's the point or if they were they were holding on to them for you don't like anyway. spending an hour to make 11k pants on i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> we're a creative we're a creative community there's usually some kind of work around here just because Retem won't give you any more pan suns doesn't mean you can't fill up your boxes with fodder and then sell yeah. to someone in the discord yeah mm -hmm. i mean often you'll make more pans if you do it that way. So then you you sell your own free Thames first to get those rewards. And then you make even more pans on selling to other people, saving them time. If, if they're millionaires, they don't care about the 50,000 that they might end up spending, probably less. But, you know, they don't mind spending that for the hacks or for the wish you well yeah. coins. If it saves yeah, them those me, hours. I guess uh, it kind of puts a mental thing on like a mental cap on me where it's just like oh my gosh if i don't do pvp there's like a maximum amount of pan suns i can earn each week in game uh between you know like all the quest and um you know free tim but then i have to think about how often was i hitting that cap where it's just like i would say one out of every three weeks i free timed over and beyond um you know the free tim week so wasn't even taking advantage of it uh, so the, yeah, oh, the big thing, the big, 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 big thing. This is this is the thing that was the double whammy with the competitive change. Uh, Luma rates, uh, because there are so many things to perfect your Lumas now. There's more mm. telomere hacks that are introduced. You can get telomere hacks easier. There's new types of telomere hacks that let you change traits. There's egg technique courses that lets you put perfect uh, or to put egg moves on Tims that weren't bred with them, so your Lumas can have egg moves now. Because it's easier to get perfect Lumas now, Lumas have become rarer. They have changed the Luma rates from 1 in 8,000 to 1 in 10,000 to compensate for all these changes. Uh, and there was... As, as you can expect, the community was happy. Everybody rejoiced. There were songs. And we danced around in circles. And No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There was yeah. nobody upset by this at all. It was it was it was a very unified community just <laughs> applause. Everybody clap. Everybody, Everybody clap. <laughs> I had actually posted in a public chat about three weeks ago that I wanted the Luma odds to increase. So I, I genuinely kind of feel like Krem has been listening to me lately. I I had said the week before the the scunch I'm sorry, the scale um Luma Week in Sci Park, I said I need Scunch Furt and I need Lapinite Furt and I need Defense Hacks. And then they gave us Defense Hacks, Scunch, and Lapinite in Park. 
And now fast forward a couple of weeks later and they make some of the changes so that I said I wanted. So uh, let's, again, again, I'm who asked out. for this? Rarzy. <laughs> it was Rarzy. Yep. <laughs> um, there were some cool bug fixes that got um, fixed. Uh, though the only one that I think is going to have an effect on the game, um, I don't know if it was this patch or if it was one of the next ones they release. Uh, but here it is. Uh, Prideful Riken and Self-Esteem Size Munch. Um, there was a lot of inconsistency with the wording of their traits. Uh, Prideful is when you knock out a Tim, you get increased attack, speed, and special um, attack. And Self-Esteem is when you knock out a Tim, um, you cleanse yourself of all conditions. Uh, the text made it sound like you could knock out any Tim in these activate, but apparently it only activated on um, knocking out enemy Tims. I guess it was a bug that it wasn't activating on your own. So now your Rykins and your um, Size Munches can knock out their own Tims and trigger Prideful and Self-Esteem. Like, not the greatest strategy, but if you want to do it, go for it. It's called playing with fire. So uh, that's been bug fixed. So we might see some Rykins do that uh, in the future. There's some situations where I think that the Self-Esteem helpless tonic will actually be fantastic or maybe not because you would have to kill first but um not hopeless tonic just uh in actually yeah i'm not even talking about self-esteem mm -hmm. i'm kind of losing it triggering your own hopeless tonic by murdering your scunch friend or whoever oh yeah if you know if they're already going if they're already going down and maybe your size munch isn't looking all that healthy you kill his friends you know, just <laughs> knock them down, take your hopeless tonic, you know, knock out one of your enemies' Thames with self-esteem, you take out your doom, and now you've got a buffed, once again, healthy size much. It's almost like bringing a sixth Tem in if you sacrifice yeah. one of um, your own. I know with, uh, with most things... Um, and this was going to have to be something that's tested by our community. And I guess somebody at some point is going to have to test this. Uh, traits are normally the last thing that trigger. So if you attack a Pigapec with Fainted Curse, um, the item triggers, uh, like if the Pigapec has Snare, and then after the Pigapec's dead, um, the Fainted Curse then triggers. Uh, I would wonder with Self-Esteem, if you knock out a Tim... It registers as um, your Tim's the last one alive. The item triggers um, going through all of the stuff and you get doomed. And then the self-esteem triggers at the end of all of that from the trait and cleanses it. Because that would be kind of cool. Like, that would be really interesting to have, like, a heal on death whenever you're ready. Um, but... I'd be willing to test that maybe uh, this week. Sure. I think I have a, a self-esteem size munch, so we can build something for it. Uh, but otherwise, I feel like that was everything we had as far as like this patch goes. The the bug, the other bug fixing, patches, um, and we're we're getting towards the end of our show. So the other bug fixing patches, if you each want to pull those up and see if there's anything you want to discuss in them, nothing uh, um jumps out at me as far as like uh things that were super important to be brought up to the community. There is one thing I kind of want to rewind Do back it. to a little ways while you're looking. Rewinding back quite a ways, actually, like 35 minutes. Uh, something <laughs> that Boo had mentioned about the dojos and for players who aren't as experienced. Mm -hmm. I've been holding on to this a while. If if your reservations are, you know, that you don't know how to build a, a TEM TV spread, please don't let that be the reason that you don't try competitive you can go into any of the club discords which are all public you can go into the official discords competitive channels you can go to any stream and you can find people who will gladly give you some tv spreads that you can put on your thames that they'll help you figure out how to do it if you don't know how everybody in this community is incredibly nice and helpful so please, please, please don't let a lack of education on the topic of competitive stop you from trying it out if you are interested in trying it out. And there's already a couple of really useful guides that have been made for just, just basic TV training, not even, you know, optimum, but just basic entry level. Here you go. This is what you've got. 
start with this. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll discuss um, one of the guides you sent me to, Gaijin. Hopefully you can discuss it because I didn't have time to read through it. Uh, oh, okay. I well, I'll try and get the either. cliff notes. So. <laughs> so, Or if we don't have time this episode, we can, you know, do it next episode. We can always, you know, just go over okay. it next episode or whatever. I mean, I, I, I didn't really look through it because I didn't really need it, but it was, you know. Hold on, let me pull up your briefly. let me pull up you your know, webcam just, and just see how big your no, is, nose grew on that one. Uh, you didn't really knew it, need it. I watched you live stream uh, fighting Musa six times in a row. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding, trial I'm and error, I'm baby, joking, but <laughs> hopeless tonic. Hopeless Tonic Tataru is the new meta. It's it's Boo, all I'm thanks very proud to all right. <laughs> I'm proud of you for sticking right. with it. I I I I wasn't gonna try and get any help. I I I just these are what I have. Hey, you these did. These are it. what I'm gonna use. Thank you, Sleepy Blank, for loaning me Thames. I have them back to give to you, by the way. Um, but yeah, I I had Thames thanks to Sleepy Blank, um, and it was. It was a bit of trial and error. Uh, I, I kept forgetting to to switch the moves out on them before going back and rematching, which was part of the problem. Um, but but overall, it 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 went went exactly as I had expected. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, our final bit of news, and yes, this whole this whole episode has been news. This is a big news week. Our final bit of of news um, for Halloween. Krima tweeted out a uh, picture with, I guess, some, like, uh, silly Halloween art on it. And it says, Beware the spirits that come out during the spookiest night of the year. Happy Halloween, Tamers. And it's got a picture of several different Tim Tim dressed up in costumes and eating candy. And there is a Tim Tim we haven't seen or know anything about and a little ghost costume floating and being hugged. So it is a brand new Tim Tim that kind of got, I guess, secret leaked. Uh, I don't know if either of you want to comment on it. It's what the one the the one yes, eye digital cat the one eye digital cat thing. It looks so happy and cute. It looks it looks absolutely adorable, and I love it, and I need it in my life. No, you said floating. I didn't get that the first time I saw it because she's hugging this mystery yeah. Tim. If it is floating, you just piqued my interest so much more because the tail is adorable. I love that color of blue. Mm -hmm. That color of blue is the asylum mascot. Mm -hmm. I love that color. If that thing floats, Luwali is going yeah, to have a I, I think friend. it floats just so for the people listening, <laughs> the way she's hugging it, she's got like one hand like rubbing the side of its face and then the other hand on the top of its head. And it doesn't look like it's being supported by her. Um, it's a lady in a Frankenstein costume. No, not Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster costume. Um, like just rubbing the head of like uh, this Tim Tim. Oh, Tataru mm -hmm. being a boss as always. Love it. Tataru dressed as, as as Dracula, holding the crystal skates. Praise be to Tataru, the god of crystal skates. <laughs> Nobody gets them. They're my crystal skates. All right. Uh, so <laughs> let's jump forward. Uh, and we've got a listener question. Um. You, too, can write into the show if you want to, and you can be like, uh, you could be like Alex Del Troy and uh, write to timtalkshow at gmail.com if you want your question read on air. Um, always wonderful to have listener questions. Uh, Alex Del Troy writes, oh, would you ever consider doing a cosmetic section talking about the fashions in the game or accepting pictures from your viewers and doing a fashion show with them? of uh, gaijin what do you think about doing a uh, fashion show i i would i definitely wouldn't be opposed to uh that at all i love seeing all the cool outfits people come up with i am a sucker for com uh, cosmetics so yes uh, i have absolutely no fashion sense or style or anything of the sorts but i love cosmetics and yes, 
yes, I love it, and no, I'm not opposed. <laughs> yeah, to uh, it. same. Uh, Rarzy, uh, I know you're uh, co-hosting this week, but uh, how do you? <laughs> you think? Oh, yep. surprise, surprise, Rarzy. Oof. So, yeah, I mean, at, at to my knowledge, currently this is a one-time thing. Potentially one more in the future if, <laughs> like, we're friendly sometimes. Boo. But um, I love the idea. I think, like you guys know, I'm I cosplay as Lawali in games. <laughs> so if there's anybody else who just does something interesting, or let's say they find a koi pattern that they really like, so they try to match it with their outfit, there's so many potential creations that people can do. And as they add more and more content, more and more cosmetics. I, I mean, then you build a scene in your house. There's, yeah, I really oh, want we this could to do happen. send in, we could do housing weeks one week, and then we could do like fashion weeks the next week. That'd be kind of fun. Um, yeah, I think that would be really cool. You know, just a, a little bit of a uh, little bit of HG Tem V and, uh, you know, the, uh, what's it called? Oh, God, I can't think of any of the runway shows. Uh, Dang it. America's Next Top Mo His Model. His meme was HGTV for anyone who's not 30. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so we'll, we'll brainstorm something yeah. this week, imagine, and then next week we'll let, announce it of just, you know, send in your pictures and stuff. So we'll, we'll try and find something cool to do. Uh, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe. I So I'm I'm selling my, my Luma crystals so that I can get a bunch of or giveaways so maybe the winner of the uh you know whatever contest the 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 fashion contest wins a, a luma i don't know what it is yet it's not a crystal <laughs> so you get that but you know there's going to be some times with egg moves and competitive traits that i'm getting and stuff so who knows it, it, it'll be cool but yeah the prize will definitely be a luma all right games, you so. heard it here um i'll try and hold you to that so the next thing we have are highlights from the community um, section. And uh, it is the final little Tim Tim fan art. Well, I mean, we're always going to have Tim Tim fan art. But uh, I guess the final little spooky fan art from uh, Halloween. We've got two posts, one from our wonderful uh, uh, friend of the show, Dead Fox. But this one that I have up on screen now is uh, came from a user at Spark. G GJ uh brain farted for a second and um it is Gazuma oh or Gazumo the wisp happy halloween and it's a uh, Gazuma with two little wispy uh blue fire lanterns hanging off of its horns and a nice little wizard's hat and cool cape and it's cute it's got kind of like an oily um past background Uh, I don't think there's a lot to say about this one other than, like, just always love to see Kazuma's. So I'll pull up the Dead Fox one next, because this one was kind of, like, super cool. Uh, so Dead Fox tweeted, um, D Dead Fox tweeted, we may be stuck inside uh, for Halloween, but that doesn't mean you uh, won't have something to do. Enjoy a Tim Tim coloring page. Maybe at Tim Tim or Dead Fox with your coloring page. I would love to see them. Um, this, this mm -hmm. is this really cool. Uh, did you want to say anything on it, Boo? Yeah. Um, I've already yelled at Dead Fox, as, as you can see, um, in the, in the comments of that, that post, uh, there's no touch room. So this, <laughs> this page is useless. There's, there's nothing, there's no All point right, here. <laughs> um, but to be fair, it, it it's it's adorable. I mean, look at look look at the hocus. Look at the hoochick. Look look at uh Smazzy. The, oh god, why can't oh, I think Kaku, of its name? Kaku, Is it Kaku. Kaku? No, not Saku, Kaku. Yeah. Look at the Kakus. I mean, come on. It it's just so cute and the crystal's so happy. And if you're not following Dead Fox on Twitter for these coloring pages, what are you even doing? Because they're all fantastic and there's multiple there's probably like ten at this point, and and they're all they're all good. That's oh wait, I, I probably them. shouldn't just click color and pages. Nobody, so get some. there we go. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nobody should ever say, "Ooh, a coloring page" in like a negative way. 
coloring pages are the best part about like buying a, a solo creator's artwork online. They send you like two coloring pages and yes. Okay. If you don't want to do it, you know, somebody who does, you know, somebody who likes to just sit there and color, who draws something, a kid, an adult, literally just do it. And these, the Temtem related ones, there's the Tatru CEO. Yep. You even get the choices. You know, you can do your own custom Lumas if you want to. If you really like a Luma that's in game, you can do an in game Luma. You can do whatever you I, want. Just please. Let yeah, your I, I love this shine. as fan art mm -hmm. because it kind of opens up fan art to everyone where it's just like we all. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Gaijin. What is this? It has eight likes. Hold on, wait eight a likes, people. I, I wasn't. I wasn't I mean, even. This is this I wasn't is a even crime. Box. This is this so is a crime. And just hit that big old F button right there. But yeah, the like. Oh my gosh, it it uh it is looking pretty nice, and I like I like um this because it's like you so often you see fan art and it's like here's my awesome piece of art, but uh there's something about a coloring page that. You know, it's just so open, and you get to do whatever you want with it. And, uh, yeah, that was, that's a unique idea. I never thought about fan art as a coloring page. So, um, I... It's like a video game compared to a movie. You get the interaction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes. All right. Uh, let's go to our final highlight from the community. And it is going to be that PvP guide that uh, we were talking about. Um, I didn't get a chance to read this, but it is a Google Doc. It's about seven pages long. Um, Gaijin sent it to me earlier, and it just has uh, um, some good strategies and ideas for uh, tackling the dojo leaders and what to keep in mind and things to help, like, team build for. So I'll attach this to the... Um, I'll attach this to the um, show notes as far as like the YouTube video. I still haven't started uploading the shows yet to the RSS feed. I've got to sit down and find time to do that. Um, but yeah, in the YouTube video, I'll make sure that this is linked so people can read it. Um, Gaijin or Rarzi, I don't know if you had time to skim this, if you wanted to pick out anything to discuss. I, I oh, okay, don't know if I have the link. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Do we ever? I don't think we ever got a. I don't think I ever got a link to the the show document. Uh, yeah, that I, I ever look say, at them. I, I did send you guys the show docs, but hold on, I'll send this to. Because I don't think I see the, it. For, in in my defense, I see where you're highlighted now. That was not specified in any way as to yeah, what it was. Um, it was just a link. Actually, uh, Gaijin, <laughs> um, you never got the show docs. The message didn't send. Yeah, I didn't think no, so. No, just, I was wondering I about that. But, today. Yeah. Sorry about that. I just sent it to you. But yeah, um, if you guys uh, want, we can come back to this like maybe right before our turn 30. So you guys can kind of skim it in the background. Um, it's 814. So we're, we're airing a little on the long side, but we're doing all right. Uh, so yeah it was a big it was a big update um do we want to skip what we've been up to this week since we talked about it so much or do you guys still want to do that section i have Go one cool it. thing i want to talk about do it with the release of our friendly friend koish i have dedicated all of my pan suns that aren't currently allocated towards the hypoxia etc toward the ricky tan fam I'm naming every single koi. I'm I'm buying eggs. So if, if you guys are breeding any koi, let me know. I'll happily buy one from you of each type. I'm buying eggs. I'm giving them to friends or community members so that they get that person's original tamer. And then we're naming it fun Ricky Tan related memes. So, so far I have Leafy Tan. I have Fishy Tan. I have Zappy Tan. RG Asosceles really liked uh, Simpleton, so we for neutral type. So we that did neutral type has the hardest hitting so... <laughs> lick in the game right now, and I am just very oh, upset yeah. you didn't call it Licky Tan. Ooh, oh, that would have been good too. We can we could potentially we can mess with things, but 
I, I am having so much fun thinking of names for this project. I have a couple of people helping me out. And every time that we hatch a new one, I send a screenshot to Ricky on Discord. And he gets I get the same response every time. It's so fun. I, I really, it's the little things in life that you do for yourself that you enjoy. And this is, this is something that I've been enjoying doing. Uh, I think that's fantastic. And I can't wait to see all of it in its beautiful glory during the course. <laughs> I cannot wait for that. And and in pure Ricky Tan fashion, all of them have max speed. There is not a single fishy. There is one single fishy. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's not Ricky Tan fashion. Fishy Tan is the fire water koish. I didn't give it max speed because I wanted it to play nice with Skunch. And, and if I wanted Quetzo with Synergy to not outspeed the perfect jab, I had to stop at 113 speed. Everything you else know, is I max was, speed. Uh, I was giving team advice to somebody today, and um, they had a like, pretty bog standard uh, two vine. I was like, yep, two vine looks good. And I stopped and I thought about the speeds of everything else on their team. And I was like, you know, some people run max speed two vine. Why would they do that? Let's take a look at this for a second. <laughs> And it was uh, kind of fun to kind of think about, like, the control max speed gives you in a game. Um, you're, you're fragile yeah, but aggressive exactly. and powerful. I mean, that's that's my life right there. <laughs> um, all right, let's jump into the um, Gaijin. I don't want to I don't want to skip past you. Did you want to share what you were up to this week? I pretty much shared most of mine. So. Aluma hunted for crystal. It was amazing because I got it. Uh, I went, I went, I went over two on my first, uh, my first raiders. And then I spent a good, uh, a good thirteen nice. hours being banned, which was really fun. Not gonna lie, GDP. honestly, I was super excited about it. Um, it was, it was, it was the best Temtem experience I've had. Um, it was nice. I, I, I took a forced leave of absence, which was cool, um, and. Uh, yeah, I, I I found a Luma crystal. It was cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it, get a bunch of Lumas to give away, and um, other than that, mm, that's it. I I I didn't find my five five. I just 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 new new content, yeah, new content, new content. Hunt. Just that's I, it. I feel that's it. it. All of it. All right, let's jump into our community events and tournaments. Of uh, as we know right now, um, and I didn't mean to do this in reverse order. We're gonna do club wars because we go from the biggest to the smallest, and uh, the biggest event going on in our community is club wars. We had Enigma in the semifinals of club wars versus Yup, uh, which is the club um, that Karth is in charge of, uh, one of the big um, Tim Tim streamers. And uh, Enigma won out over Yup. Uh, five not tamer knockouts to three tamer knockouts uh, for Yup. And it was, I watched the opening gambit of these games. It was a lot, it was a lot of fun to watch these games, but um, I got a little like firsthand experience. Uh, the night before, Huron Crane asked me to um, do some scrim uh, scrimmages or scrimmages with him. To get them for the games on the following day, and uh, we fought a couple times, and I got to play a few team comps into them, and it's always just so much fun going against do like well not dojo leaders club um, club members because you know you can have like that friendly competition, and it's just like when you get outplayed or you do something cool, it's like ha ha oh you know and like we got the it it was fun it was fun so anyways I saw some of the strategies Huron was running. And uh, watching the game, I just had so much, like, thought of just, like, well, watching what Yup was about to do. And I was like, that guy Alice is max, or that guy Alice is not max speed, but that guy Alice is definitely spec'd out speed, outspeed the Tims it's going against. And then the guy Alice carrying freaking Euron Crane through those games was crazy. Um, I... I, I get really excited about this. So, Rarzi, um, I'm going to give you space to talk if you want to say anything. I know Gaijin most of the time just kind of uh, nods along for the... Easy, yeah. easy, easy, easy. I, I, I love Club Wars. I, I truly do. I, I know we're nearing the end, and that kind of makes me sad, but it also makes me look forward to next season when we get to compete. 
everything about it. I mean, these these players are spending all week long preparing not just their own teams, but also the entire club strategy of, you know, I, it was quarterfinals, Ronan. Ooh, who did Ronan face? Uh, yeah. Enigma. It was Enigma. It was Ronan versus Enigma, and they had uh, Tiki, Tabuki, was using a Sparks team. So they, they kept on throwing him in because Sparks is better when you get to counter pick early on because you throw the Gosma in first and then your second Tem can counter whatever your opponent leads with. So it was it was so cool seeing actual club based team dynamics where you would almost sacrifice a player similar to how we sometimes sacrifice Thames in our matches if you absolutely need to have a certain matchup in a certain way later on so i mean once it got down to the wire it was subaki versus uh tiki and ricky and they sacrificed ricky so that uh so that tiki would stand a better chance and subaki the amazing player that he is was able to work his way through uh winning at least both of those games i don't know if he won more earlier on i, I wasn't there for the beginning of that series I absolutely love it. There, there's so much complexity beyond rock, paper, scissors meta that that's where you see it come through is when the best players in the community. Are yeah, playing I, and I, I remember the exact game you're talking about where um, so the way it the way competitive works is uh, once um, one side wins a game, the loser gets to pick invite order. That way it's always keeping it fair so that the loser always has a chance to come back into the game. So, um, one, so, of uh, when, when I think Ronan lost a game, they got the chance to get invite order and they wanted invite order, or, or rather they were going to have the side advantage against Subaki's team. And then, so we, what ended up happening was, um, either, I think Ronan, like you said, threw a player um, because they wanted to keep the advantage of invite order of just like if you win awesome if you don't win then you know we're set <laughs> uh or it might have been it might have been reversed but i i do remember like that moment of them throwing down like away a player just to change up the invite order of uh, they yeah. threw down their leader too that's that's the best part it wasn't like a grunt player it was it was the, one of the leaders of the club was sacrificed as to far the as like this past was. week um i i think one thing that can be said to the just higher tiers at which these players play um i got a chance to compete in club wars a couple weeks ago for enigma and i almost won against um yup like it, it literally came down to the last tim versus last tim situation whose hyperkinetic was hitting first and harder and, um, I, you know, I lost that uh, standoff. And so I was just so excited that I got to play that, um, you know, I was able to compete on that stage. And that, like, my game was competitive down to the wire. Uh, Tut Pup um, was competing for Yup, and uh, Yup didn't have, like, the best opening into Club Wars. And Tut Pup was actually able to bring it back to 3 4 um, versus uh, Enigma. And uh, then, you know, Tut Pup was, like, knocked out. And, like, I saw Tut earlier today and was like, frickin' Tut, good job. He's like, what? I lost. And I'm just like, yeah, but you knocked people out. And I like that that standard that, you know, people can hold themselves to of just, like, yeah, I played well, but I could have played a lot better. And, like, when this game goes, you know, full release and it's bigger... Like, it just makes me excited for, you know, whatever community we're going to have that, you know, bonds over this. Of just like, you know, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Sasuke's and Naruto's every day of just like, I'm going to be Hikage. I'm going to be Hikage. <laughs> and uh, nobody stops until, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Kage. Good All Lord. Right, I know, I know. I'm, I'm showing, I'm showing my, I haven't watched Naruto in years. So... And honestly, Sasuke was just a giant baby the entire series, and it wasn't until the end that he wanted to be Hokage, <laughs> so he, he's irrelevant here. It has Fair. nothing to do with Sasuke, you know. Never um, watched Naruto. You're missing out. All right, out. and you're so that's going to lead us into our main topic. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> all right, that's, uh, that's going to be our show <laughs> for today. So before 
uh, let's do our closing in plugs, and then we'll do our turn 30 with uh, Rarzy. Uh, Rarzy, um, shout out to all the lovely people uh, watching and who will be listening to this video. Uh, what what are you doing? Um, where can people find you if they want to see more of you? So my name is Rarzi on every single platform, except for Reddit, because I think I got banned, but I never used my, I don't know. My, except my for Guys in Boot Channel, where you're Rarzi. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> I, uh, I, I will get back into streaming here pretty soon. We're going to start doing some PvP stuff with the club uh, on stream, which is nice. Get back to the routine a little bit. Um, Otherwise, I mean, I'll still just be sticking around. I, I cast with Plus a lot. I've joined Kennedy oh, once. I'd love to do it again. Welcome. I am with Temporium all the time. I, yeah, on streams, if anybody wants to join Club Asylum or is interested in it, uh, we have 11 players, I think, right now, uh, which is an absolute... I, I'm so thankful that we were able to get it off the ground as quickly as we have. Uh, we're definitely looking to compete in club wars next season so if you're competitive if you want to be competitive our first scrim night is this coming saturday we're gonna have two different blocks because we're all over the world and it's yeah we're just we're just gonna dominate stuff and asylum worldwide uh i'm uh prez b kennedy uh <laughs> spelled uh p-r-e-s-b-k-e-n-n-e-d-y i am on twitter and youtube and uh twitch too i live stream there uh if you want to watch tim tim or dnd content you know who to hit up. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Gaijin. Yeah. Uh, Gaijin, Gaijin. Boo? Uh, where can the people find you? What you doing with your life? Well, I mean, <laughs> not much. Gosh, my, my life is is everything I'd ever, ever hoped it would be. Mm -hmm. No. Um, <laughs> I Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat whatever wherever it's gaijin boo i-t-s-g-a-i-j-i-n-b-u-u -I, -U. I stream a lot of temtem i stream some other stuff i i i just i like i like talking to people so stop by say hi drop me drop me a follow or something love you guys uh, you know, thing you. if um again if you want to write into the show um tim talk show at gmail.com uh, if you want to write a question, you want to make any suggestions to the show or anything, definitely pop us an email. I uh, check that email probably about two or three times a week. All right. Uh, with all of that said, Rarzi, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, turn 30, little end of the show, we do something non-Tim Tim related, and you had a little bit of news you wanted to talk about. So I... I was jumping back and forth, juggling between two different ideas, and I, I decided to switch it up from what I told you before. I came from Counter-Strike before Temtem. I wanted to go that way. I just kind of have an interesting right, fact about sharks. I... <laughs> so if you think about how old like a shark is as, as an animal, you might th let's put it in, in perspective. I think it's like 200,000 years is what they're saying, give or take. Humanity has existed in this form uh go back a little bit further there's like 10 million years is something to do with trees 250 million years ago was the first fern which was like the first tree 400 million years ago the only multicellular plants were algae 450 million years ago sharks were swimming in the water interesting <laughs> that's all i got <laughs> 450 million years Four. old they have seen and would you some believe stuff. some of those sharks still haven't caught their five out of five fish <laughs> i would believe that a hundred percent a hundred percent over ten thousand possibilities no, that's, that's that's wild though How... uh go ahead boo i cut you off ETE says, tell us more. Don't stop there. We want to know more facts about sharks, Rorzy. So if you have to just Wikipedia it real quick, uh, read us the Wikipedia entry for sharks briefly. I mean, at least we, the have, intro. we have a, uh, while you pull that All up, right. Rorzy, we do have a uh, Tim, well, I guess it's not Tim Tim related. It's like my mind goes to Mastion. Um, 
I like to do little hypotheticals, and I'll pose one at all of you um, after this, uh, after uh, the show's over in the post chat. Are you ready, Rosie? I'm going to read you guys something in the Sharks Wikipedia page titled Thermoregulation. Okay. Ooh. Most sharks are cold blooded, or more precisely, <laughs> Uh, poikilothermic, poikilothermic, meaning that their internal body temperature matches that of their ambient environment. Members of the family Lamindae, such as the short fin mako shark, which, by the way, is cute, and the dark, er, the dark, and the great white shark, which is also cute, are homeothermic and maintain a higher body temperature than the surrounding water. Guys, great white sharks are warm. <laughs> Give them a I don't Take know if, uh, <laughs> as a Tim Talk, we can endorse that, so we'd be <laughs> hesitant. It's true. This is going out to the masses. <laughs> be hesitant around sharks. In these sharks, a strip of aerobic. Ooh, there we go. We're back in Tem Tem land. Aerobic volarens, aerobic sharks. Strips, strips of aerobic red muscle located near the center of the body generates the heat. Mm -hmm. Volarens warm too. Give Volaren a hug. Which the body retains via counter current exchange mechanism. I'm going to cut you off, Rarzi, in about 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> the common thresher and big eye thresher sharks have a similar mechanism of maintaining the elevated body temperature, parentheses 40. And <laughs> if you enjoyed the talk today, give the show a like, uh, give the show a follow. We super appreciate it, everybody. Um, yes, I'm on subscribe, YouTube. and that's where we're going to end today. Uh, bye, everybody. Uh, for everybody um, on stream, we'll probably do a little post show.